The Winterland Mall, a sprawling haven of twinkling lights and holiday exuberance, pulsed with the festive spirit just a week before Christmas. In the midst of this yuletide spectacle, I found myself newly appointed to the position of part-time security guard. The Winterland Mall was renowned not only for its vast array of stores but also for its elaborate Christmas decorations that transformed it into a winter wonderland. Among the enchanting displays were lifelike reindeer, pristine faux snow, and of course, the star of the show, the venerable Santa Claus. My role, seemingly uncomplicated on the surface, was to keep a watchful eye on the jolly old man himself. I was tasked with ensuring Santa didn't overindulge in the spiked eggnog that was a staple of the holiday season. More importantly, my duty extended to making certain that the children's encounters with Santa were delightful and devoid of any potential frights. Santa, the linchpin of this festive spectacle, was portrayed by a gentleman who looked the part to perfection. His snow-white beard and flushed cheeks exuded authenticity, creating an atmosphere of warmth and joy. As children and their eager guardians patiently queued up for their turn, I circled the vicinity with a facade of nonchalance, my donut in hand, a makeshift prop to complete the picture of a laid-back security guard. Yet, beneath the veneer of holiday cheer, a disquieting unease nagged at the edges of my consciousness whenever my gaze settled on Santa. His eyes harbored a peculiar twinkle, a glint that hinted at something beyond the facade of festive merriment. At times, I convinced myself that I was merely succumbing to an overactive imagination, attributing my suspicions to an overdose of crime dramas and detective novels. Then came the fateful Christmas Eve, a night when the mall was transformed into a bustling epicenter of holiday revelry. The line to see Santa stretched to the food court, a testament to the unwavering enthusiasm of the season. From my concealed vantage point in the shadows, I observed Santa adjusting his gloves with an air of nervous anticipation. It was in this moment that a peculiar bulge in his sack caught my discerning eye, it seemed less like a sack brimming with gifts and more like a bag carrying ill-gotten gains. As the realization dawned upon me, my heart quickened its pace. This was no ordinary mall Santa, he was a thief exploiting the joyful chaos of the season as a smokescreen for his nefarious activities. With a sense of urgency, I hastily radioed my fellow security guard, Dave, to share my discovery. Initially met with skepticism, Dave's expression turned grave as he scrutinized the unfolding situation. Recognizing the imminent threat, we decided swift action was imperative. Santa could not be allowed to make a hasty getaway with a bag full of stolen goods. Quietly, we discreetly informed the mall management of the impending crisis and dialed the police, orchestrating a plan to apprehend the imposter while maintaining the illusion of a normal holiday event. Minutes felt like hours and an escalating sense of dread gripped me as the line to see Santa gradually dwindled. The children continued to laugh and pose for pictures, blissfully oblivious to the potential danger lurking beneath the veneer of holiday cheer. What if Santa realized he was under surveillance? Would he resort to desperate measures, perhaps brandishing a weapon to make his escape? The culmination of our efforts drew near as a young boy, no older than six, approached Santa for his turn. The excitement was palpable as his mother handed Santa her phone for a picture. It was in this innocent exchange that the unexpected unfolded, the boy's toy truck slipped from his pocket, revealing a small, shiny gun. Panic flashed across Santa's face, and in that moment, Dave and I swiftly moved in, neutralizing the threat just as the police arrived, their sirens adding a discordant note to the festive atmosphere. The revelation sent shockwaves through the mall and its visitors. Santa, it turned out, had been using the guise of the holiday gig to clandestinely scout the premises for a potential heist, his criminal record as extensive as it was alarming. Miraculously, no one had been harmed, leaving children and parents alike astonished at the unexpected danger that had lurked beneath the veneer of Christmas cheer. That Christmas Eve became a poignant reminder that even within the most jubilant exteriors, the most unexpected dangers could lie in wait. As for me, my perception of Santa Claus underwent a profound shift. The Winterland Mall, once a haven of holiday delight, had become an unwitting battleground of good versus unexpected evil. It was a stark lesson in the importance of vigilance, even in the seemingly harmless settings of festive celebration. Christmas had always been a time of joy and celebration for my family, a day when we gathered under one roof to share laughter, delicious food, and the warmth of each other's company. This particular Christmas day was no exception. The aroma of a perfectly roasted turkey filled the air, 
and the Christmas tree sparkled with an array of lights and ornaments. The living room was alive with the sound of laughter, clinking glasses, and the playful chatter of children. As we savoured the last bites of our filling meal, the adults sipped hot cider and swapped stories, while the younger children revelled in the excitement of their new toys. The atmosphere was charged with love and happiness, creating a perfect holiday tableau. However, amidst the festive cheer, an unexpected turn of events shattered the idyllic scene. From outside, a sudden eruption of shouting caught my attention, followed by a shotgun shot that echoed through the air. The room fell silent as a chilling realisation settled in, excusing myself from the table. I informed my family that I needed to check on something, though my heart pounded with an unspoken fear. Swiftly donning my coat and boots, I rushed to the front door, the warmth of the house abruptly replaced by the cold winter night. The urgent need to investigate tugged at me as I stepped into the darkness. In the neighbouring yard, illuminated by the dim glow of the moon, I witnessed a harrowing scene. Two figures grappled ferociously in the snow-covered yard, one unmistakably my neighbour, Mr. Johnson, known for his grizzled exterior and stubborn demeanour, and the other a cloaked, hunched-over figure with malicious intent. A knot tightened in my stomach as I sprinted toward them, my breath visible in the frigid air. The assailant's masked face betrayed nothing but malice as he shouted menacingly at Mr. Johnson. I yelled for them to stop, my voice trembling with a mixture of fear and determination. The intruder, acknowledging my presence, turned toward me, his eyes oozing venom. In his hand, he tightly clutched the ominous firearm, a stark reminder of the danger that lurked in our once tranquil neighbourhood. Seizing the opportunity, Mr. Johnson launched a surprising counter-attack, leveraging a strength that defied his age. The struggle ensued, and amidst the grunts and expletives, the gun slipped from the intruder's grasp, landing on the snowy ground. I rushed to join the fray, driven by an instinctive need to protect my neighbour and confront the danger that had unexpectedly invaded our peaceful Christmas celebration. Together, we managed to subdue the assailant, forcing him to retreat into the dark distance. As we caught our breath, a chill lingered in the air, both from the winter cold and the unsettling confrontation that had just taken place on what was meant to be a day of joy. Summoning the police, we recounted the harrowing events, grappling with the unsettling question of why Mr. Johnson had become the target of such violence. Was it a random act, or was there a more sinister motive at play? The investigation unfolded as the night wore on, and the once jubilant Christmas celebration now felt like a distant memory. Inside the house, the festive spirit had been shattered. Instead of reveling in the warmth of family and the joy of the season, we found ourselves huddled together, trying to make sense of the unexpected chaos that had unfolded just beyond our doorstep. The unease persisted as the hours passed, the police meticulously carrying out their investigation. Christmas, typically a season of love and togetherness, had been transformed into a stark reminder of life's unpredictability. The sound of the gunshot, initially jarring and incongruous with the holiday spirit, had unveiled the lurking dangers that could befall us, even on a day meant for celebration. In the aftermath, as we reflected on the events of that Christmas, a collective sense of gratitude emerged. Gratitude for the safety of our family, gratitude for the strength displayed by Mr. Johnson, and gratitude for the resilience that allowed us to face the unexpected and emerge together, stronger than before. That Christmas had become a chapter in our family's story, a tale of overcoming adversity, finding courage in the face of danger, and cherishing the bonds that held us together, even in the darkest of times. On a crisp and snowy Christmas day, the air shimmered with anticipation as my family and I embarked on a journey to a festive holiday event. As I skillfully navigated the icy roads, my wife, Sarah, and our young daughter, Emily, filled the car with laughter and joyous renditions of Christmas carols playing on the radio. 
The picturesque snow-covered landscape outside the car window seemed to mirror the enchantment and magic of the season, promising a day filled with cherished memories. Driving through the quiet, snow-laden streets, a sense of warmth and togetherness enveloped us. Emily's infectious enthusiasm added an extra layer of joy to the day, and I couldn't have asked for a more perfect Christmas. Little did I know that our idyllic holiday was on the precipice of taking an unexpected and chilling turn. As we rounded a bend, I noticed two figures standing in the middle of the road, adorned in full Santa Claus regalia. Their presence initially elicited a chuckle from me, assuming they were participants in some elaborate Christmas celebration. Feeling the holiday spirit, I decided to stop the car, anticipating a whimsical surprise that would add to the festive atmosphere. However, as the Santas approached, an uneasy feeling began to settle in. There was an odd glint in their eyes that betrayed a sinister motive beneath the jolly facade. The scent of alcohol permeated the air as I reluctantly rolled down the window, hoping for a harmless interaction. What started as an attempt to spread Christmas cheer quickly spiraled into something far more nefarious. The taller Santa, with a menacing grin stretching beneath his fake beard, tapped assertively on my window and demanded, hand over your wallet and your keys. The once jovial atmosphere inside the car morphed into one of fear and panic. Launching at Sarah and Emily in the rearview mirror, I saw the color drain from their faces, replaced by wide-eyed terror. It became glaringly evident that these were not merry pranksters, but criminals with malicious intent. To protect my family, I reluctantly complied with their demands. My hands shook as I reached for my wallet, but the situation escalated when the other Santa, seemingly dissatisfied with the proceedings, had different plans. He grabbed my collar with an unexpected ferocity, reaching into the car. Panic surged through me as they overpowered me, pinning me down against the frigid seat. My family, paralyzed by fear, watched helplessly as Emily's sobs pierced through the tense silence. It was a gut-wrenching realization that I was utterly powerless to shield them from these Santa's stern assailants. In the midst of the struggle, the world seemed to narrow down to the immediate threat facing my loved ones. Just when it felt like hope was slipping away, headlights materialized around the corner, a fortuitous intervention in the form of a speeding vehicle. Startled by the sudden turn of events, the Santas momentarily released their grip on me. Seizing the opportunity, I forcefully shoved them away and sprinted back to the safety of our car. A burly man emerged from the Good Samaritan's vehicle as it skidded to a stop accompanied by a group of friends. They would be robbers, now outnumbered and caught off guard, hastily fled into the dark, snowy night, their shouts echoing in the cold air. The immediate threat had passed and a profound sense of gratitude and relief flooded my veins. As the strangers approached, genuine concern etched on their faces. They checked on us to ensure our physical well-being. Their kindness and willingness to intervene sharply contrasted with the malevolence we had encountered just moments before. Though shaken, my family and I were physically unharmed thanks to the timely intervention of these good Samaritans. The incident cast a shadow over our holiday spirit, the echoes of fear and vulnerability lingering as we continued to the Christmas event. Our hearts, heavy with the weight of what transpired, struggled to shake off the anise. The holiday cheer, though dampened, still flickered within us like a resilient flame refusing to be extinguished. As we sat together at the festive event, surrounded by twinkling lights and the sounds of seasonal merriment, we held each other close, finding solace in the warmth of family and the knowledge that, even in the face of darkness, the light of goodwill could prevail. The true meaning of Christmas revealed itself not only in the absence of challenges but in the resilience, compassion, and generosity that emerged in the aftermath of adversity. It was a poignant reminder that the holiday season is not just about the trappings of festivity but a celebration of the human spirit's capacity for kindness, even in the bleakest moments.